Hey everyone, so today I wanted to give you a little behind the scenes look at one of the trailers that I've made. I'm gonna show some rough drafts, how I put things together, game capture I didn't use, and just generally talk you through my thought process. This trailer is for the brawler game Way of the Passive Fist by Household Games. I first saw this game at PlayStation Experience 2016. In the game, you parry your opponent's attacks until they're tired, and then you nudge them over. It's kind of like that episode of The Simpsons when Homer becomes a boxer and people just punch him until they're exhausted and then he just taps them. Now's your chance, nudge him, nudge him! <laughs> the creators are really inspired by fighting games like Street Fighter Alpha and you might have heard of Evo Moment 37 when Daigo Umahara did a perfect parry of Chun-Li's attacks and then goes on to win the game. <laughs> They basically said, what if that was the whole game? And they made it in this kind of Turtles in Time, Final Fight, 90s, arcade sort of style. So, as you can see here, this is my final sequence for the trailer, which I'll show this at the very end when we're done going through all the rough drafts. But you can see there's a lot of sound effects and there's a lot of stuff going on here. But let's go to the very beginning. This sequence here is a very sparse sequence which was made just for the composer. You can see that it's just a bunch of text and these colored cards. The composer, Ori Falconer, sent me this early draft of the song that he'd been working on. This is one of the rare occasions when I had a really good idea about what I wanted this trailer to be. I mostly wanted the parry mechanic to be as clear as possible. I wanted the audience to go into this trailer understanding this is a game about parrying, and then everything else would exist within that context of that mechanic. Because if you look at this game just regularly being played, it could look just like a regular brawler if you're not really focused on the right things. And in fact, Household Games, one of their early trailers, looked kind of like this. It was a little unfocused, and it didn't make as much of a point about the pairing mechanic as I want to do for this trailer. So for the intro, I wanted to just have lots and lots of attacks being parried, one after another. And then at this last moment, when the enemy gets tired, the player just taps them, the sound effects sort of reverb out, the music cuts out, and then we just make this really big point of this enemy being nudged over. And then after that, music gets to kick in, and we show the player just nudging over tons and tons of enemies. Things get more exciting. Maybe they just do some more attacks. They're dodging, they're walking through different levels. They're body checking, and they're ripping checkpoints open, getting power-ups. And then over here, we get to the bosses, show different enemy types, and hopefully all this gets more and more exciting as it goes along. And then at the very, very end, I wanted this final montage to be kind of like the scenes in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, or The Matrix, where they're sort of fending off tons and tons of enemy attacks with just one arm, and they look totally badass, and it's really amazing. And then just finish off with the final attack, this kind of screen-clearing attack of the game, which is very, very satisfying. And so the idea behind the different colors of these sections is to cue the composer into knowing which parts of the trailer should have the music shift in some sort of way, just to kind of key the audience into the idea that we're onto another gameplay section of this trailer. And I don't expect the timing that they give me back to be precise because I'm still figuring it out at this point. And usually we'll end up going back and forth just a little bit to adjust the timing and make sure everything is nice and smooth. And the other good thing about having this sort of outline very, very early on in the project when working with a composer is that they're not waiting around for a cut to work with because I don't want to be the bottleneck in the process. So I just want to make sure they have something that they need. So they have it, you know, at least a couple weeks or something like that to do their work. And then in the meantime, I can focus on things like game capture and the editing. So in this sequence here, I was building up the intro just using rough capture. I wasn't really worrying about the composition or the backgrounds or the eye trace, just worried about how all these shots would integrate with the music. The good capture really just comes in later after establishing what will happen in each shot. And I also have some assorted clips here where I'm just kind of experimenting with some ideas. You can see in this intro, the sound effects here are just clearly mapping to the different parries. Mm -hmm. 
And at this point, Ori had given me some music that he'd been working on for the trailer, so things are already getting pretty exciting. And then in this sequence here, you can see I filled out quite a lot of the sequence, and a lot of this is this is all still temporary capture, you can tell, because I have HUD elements here that I'm going to get rid of later on. The whole idea here is to just kind of roughly figure out the order of the different gameplay ideas and just see how exciting they are. Again, not worry about composition or eye trace. Just want to see how it flows and combines with the music and see if the, the arc of the gameplay ideas is exciting because ideally uh, everything here is very exciting and then we kind of go to some basics and slowly introduce new ideas, show the bosses, give them kind of each their own little moment and then have tease for the final boss here. And then here's the final climax where having all these parries and dodges, one after another, and then the final attack. So you can see how this lines up. And so there's still a lot of work to do here, but the very, very basic ideas are pretty mapped out here. And you can see here, I also didn't put in any sound effects because in some cases during gameplay, the sound effects can be pretty messy because there are certain things that are overlapping. And I really only want to have the very, very specific sound effects that will go well with the music in each moment. <laughs> And so for this next sequence here, this is basically the same as the previous one, but you can see that there are a lot more sound effects filled in here. There's little whooshes with the, next to the parry, there's lots of parrying here, then there's attack sounds, all attack sounds and enemy grunts, that sort of thing. Occasionally there's some kind of trailer sound effects like rises and whooshes, and it just kind of fills it all out and it kind of adds sort of like a second track to the music. And all these sound effects here are, these are all just individual sound effects that the developer sent to me in kind of a big Dropbox link. Again, all this capture is still old, has a lot of HUD stuff in there that I want to get rid of eventually by recapturing everything, but just worrying about how the sound effects integrate with the music and just make sure that it's all very cohesive and flows well. And next, here is a sequence that I have where I just took a screenshot of most of the environments in the game. And the point of this sequence was to start planning out which backgrounds I would use for which parts of the trailer, because I want to make sure to show there's a lot of variety. I don't want just every single background to be, say, deserts. Um, because it's just nice colors to explore. But at the same time, there are also some backgrounds which are much busier than the other ones, which might clutter up the frame. So I wanted to make sure that everything looked nice together. Maybe I choose backgrounds based on the enemies that I want to show in a particular area. And in this sequence here, I was just roughing in those ideas about which backgrounds to show when and thinking about how the colors and everything match. So for example, here, I really liked how this is all red and orange, and then it matches up with this blue sort of section here. I think I didn't end up using this, but I'm just kind of experimenting. Um, for example, here, I'm just thinking about how the transitions from like the red to the green to the pink and then back to the red and just playing it through and seeing how my eye feels because in some cases it's good to jump between different color palettes and other times I just kind of want it to be gentler on the eye so then that it's just much easier for people to process when they're looking at it. Um, and then back here you can see how if you look this goes from yellow to kind of a green yellow to a red and then to brown and so yellow, then green. And just in my mind, these colors kind of made sense in terms of a progression. And whether or not I did this 100% in the end, uh, I probably didn't, but it's just one more way that I think about the composition of the shots. And so here I have a whole bunch of capture that I mostly didn't use because you can see only these tracks, only these clips here 
on these raised tracks here. These are the ones that are the finals for each of these shots. And there's a whole bunch of footage that I did not use. So let's take a look at why the final shots made it the cut. So for this shot here, the idea is just ripping off this power-up box and all these power-ups spew out. Um, I really liked the kind of the animation of this movement here. I knew that it would look really good synced up to the music. And there are also checkpoints which use the same animation, but they didn't look quite as good as these moments where the, the power-ups just kind of spew out of this box. So for example, this one here, I wouldn't have used this one anyway because it's fighting, there are a lot of things fighting for the attention of the center here, which is, you know, all these things are very, very bright red, big purple and orange, so it's very distracting. Or for example, this one here, it's basically the same as this one, except we have this checkpoint here that's just drawing the eye over here. And so I decided to use this one. It's much cleaner and simpler. And then it's just satisfying to just kind of see these power-ups coming out of the box. So this shot here, the idea is that the protagonist is just nudging over these different enemies one after another when they're all tired. And I was just experimenting with what would be a way to do this very quickly and what would look good. So for example, in this shot here, I go from right to left to up. So it start here and it goes here and it goes here, which I didn't think was very interesting. Um, same with this one. You know, start here, then moves to here, then up to here. Um, and then this one here, you can see that these enemies, they're all stacked on top of each other. So it's harder to see them. And this is the final one that I use. So this one has that motion going from the right to the left to the right, and also have a variety of characters. So th this is a different character and these are palette swaps. And then over here, I have the sort of dodge attack move um, that I wanted to show. And this one here, I didn't use this one because all of these characters are very localized right here. And there's a lot of empty space where there's just nothing going on. Um, so the character moves through like here. And I thought that we could do better. So the final version of this shot, the characters are kind of a little bit more evenly distributed. So it's here, here, and here. And then the character just moves through this way. This shot here is a is this body slam move, which is it's a lot of fun. It's got a lot of nice impact, kind of reverberates out. And then you have these enemies all falling backwards. So there are a few things that I wanted here. I wanted the impact to be very centrally located in the frame. I wanted to have lots of bodies falling out. And I also just wanted to have some variety of the characters. So um, for example, this one here, these exact same characters, not very interesting. The final shot that I ended up with was this one, which I really like just the variety of character types. You know, you got this big green guy, you got this robot in here. And then when it comes out, then this person's over here, this person's over here. And just really like how balanced the shot looks. So this next shot here is with this boss battle, Tanner who has a sort of magnifying lens that he uses to attack with this big laser. And so most of these shots were about just having the composition that I liked with this laser. So here, this one with the diagonal, I, I like because it crosses over the frame. Whereas over here, he's all over here and there's all this empty space, nothing's being used. So since this laser is the brightest thing on screen, your eye just focuses here and it's all this wasted space. And same kind of for this one here, but the reverse. Laser's here, empty space over here. And then this final version here is the one where the laser went across the frame the most. So this one is the most balanced in my perspective. Um, so I used it for the final. Nice. And so here, this part of the level, there's this laser coming from off screen and then shoots off and then anyone in its, in its path, including the protagonist, will get hit. Um, so I wanted to have just all these bodies just falling over at the same time. So this is a bad take because these enemies back here don't fall. And also I wanted the character to kind of dodge out of the way so it's more exciting. Whereas the character just kind of slowly walks this way out of the way of the laser. And this one only had a couple enemies. Same with this one and the protagonist got hit. And see here I'm just still walking out of the way. And a lot of the stuff I figure out as I'm playing, 
uh, I'll have a set game plan at the beginning. And then I realized that maybe parts of it weren't as exciting. You know, I'll try to find a way to make it look better. And so for the final of this shot, you have all these characters. They all get hit, and the character also dashes out of the way. So I thought that was the best version. And this is the final shot of the trailer, which again, I just wanted variety of characters, and I wanted people moving out from all directions, as many as possible, um, with as much variety as possible. I just did lots and lots of takes from different parts of the game. You can see a lot of times they're just repeated characters, or maybe the distribution of characters didn't look good. You know, this one here, they're mostly the same character. But for the final version, I had five characters here, which, yeah, a couple of them are the exact same, but I just liked just how many bodies there were. Just, it just looked very impressive. All it makes it look, it makes it look very powerful. Okay, so this is the next sequence in which I just incorporated a lot of that new capture. And I did other things like making sure that the character lined up perfectly in these montages. So the only thing changing was the background and it just looks very seamless. And here I care a lot about eye trace. So for example, this movement from, this isn't perfect here, but the character's here. And then in the next shot, the character's here and then moves here. So we just want to continue that motion. So you can see the character's in the center, then it's off to the left, moving over towards the right, and then kind of moves back a little bit to the middle, but everything's kind of generally moving in this sort of direction. And all the sound effects were in place already, so just had to make sure everything was nicely lined up. Here's another example of for composition. For this boss battle, I used this shot because, again, I like this diagonal movement here. Um, and then for this end zoom here, uh, I just added a little bit of movement just so it's a little bit more exciting as we get to the end. And this very last sequence here is basically the exact same thing as the previous one, but the difference is that everything has been scaled up in After Effects instead of using Premiere. So you can see this is a, a rendered out version, which let's look at it in After Effects. Okay, so here's the project in After Effects. These are all the shots from the trailer. And the reason that I did it here is because with pixel art, when you scale it up in something like Premiere, it the pixels can get blurry, which I'll make an extreme example here. So let's zoom way in and just look at these pixels. They're very blurry. Um, there's a lot of kind of fringing here and it, it's just not these nice crisp pixels. So over here, under these switches, you have this one here with this little kind of jagged line. And it has a few different modes, but for pixel art, if you switch it to this one, which is very, uh, which is pixelated, this, this means that it's that nearest neighbor scaling, which you can see, just look at these pixels here when I toggle it around. You can see this mode looks very blurry. This mode is kind of sort of a little bit sharper, but it's still blurry, whereas here, they're nice and straight. Now, obviously, I wouldn't normal, I wouldn't ever zoom in this close, but having this mode to make everything seem extra sharp uh, just makes everything look better. And then briefly, I can just show the basic idea behind how I made this end card, which is pretty much just using this one After Effects script. They sent me this logo art, which has all the different layers for all the different characters and the, the title and all the different bosses here. And I just used this After Effects script called Multiplane, which you can see this panel here. And basically all I have to do is say how far I want the front element to be in relation to the back element. So here I just, as a test, I set this at 10,000 pixels and I just hit the button. And you can see in this custom view that it's now offset in 3D space. What the script does is that it makes sure that that ensures that all, everything in the composition is still at the same size, even though it's all offset in 3D space. So now if I move the camera in and out, then you get that nice sort of parallax look, which just makes the 2D art look a little bit more exciting. Um, in fact, in this end card, I also just added like a little bit of animation to the characters uh, using the puppet tool. You can just see here 
if you look at the character's hand, it's just just moving a little bit. You know, it's not, nothing terribly amazing, but just to add a little bit of movement and make it a little bit more exciting. Okay, and that's pretty much it. This, is, this was a very atypical project in that I just knew exactly what I wanted from the very beginning. The music was amazing. The gameplay was a lot of fun. And this is very representative of like a very smooth beginning to end process for the trailer. But hopefully this was interesting to see how everything came together. So now let's just take a look at the finished trailer. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed watching this. Please let me know in the comments below if there are any other trailers that I've made which you'd like a behind the scenes look at. And if I have the project files for it, then I'll try to make another video like this for that particular trailer. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe, hit that bell and all that good stuff. And you know, leave me a comment, let me know if you like this video. If you didn't, let me know why. Um, thanks for watching and have fun.